Hello, here I am going to show you how to design and simulate three-phase software control with Ripper in MATLAB simulation software. Previously, in part one, we discussed brief about turn-on and turn-off technique of ACR and also I shown how to design three-phase software control rectifier in MATLAB simulation software. In this part, I am going to show you how to simulate this three-phase software control rectifier. These are the three-phase voltages A, B and C. A is connected to P1, B is connected to P2, C is connected to P3. These three voltages are connected in star connection. Here, this is the A phase. A phase I am taking as reference. B phase lags the A phase by 120 degrees. C phase lags the A phase by 240 degrees. Here now give the values for three phase voltages. Here I am giving 315, no, 415 volts, 415 volts, and uh, A phase I am taking reference as well to 0, frequency 50 hertz. And the B phase, magnitude is 415, and uh, phase B phase lags the A by 120 degree, lag it, so minus 120. Frequency 50. C phase. Magnitude is 4 kilowatts and the And C phase lags the A phase by 240 degrees. Lagging. That's why minus 2. Frequency 50. Okay. Now I have given voltages. Now the second thing is applying triggering pulses to the gate of the SC. Means how to do this triggering pulses. For this, we have to recollect the previous uh, discussion that is to turn on SCR, it requires forward bias voltage and a gate pulse. Here, suppose three thyristors connected to the three different voltages. Which thyristor will turn on first? The answer for this is the more positive voltage connected thyristor, first it will become forward bias. Then by applying gate pulse to this thyristor, it will turn on. Means it will act as a closed switch. Then immediately the remaining two thyristors T2 and T3 will become reverse bias. This thing we discussed in previously. By keeping this thing in mind, observe the operation of a three phase optical control rectifier. Here observe this is A phase, this is this is B phase and this is C phase. At each instant, at each instant, the magnitudes of A, B, and C voltages are different. See here, at this instant, A is more, C is less, B is negative. So at this instant, A is more, B is less, C is negative. See, if you observe that, at every instant, at every instant, only one voltage is more. Only one voltage is more. We have to identify at which instant A voltage is more positive. At which instant A B voltage is more positive. At which instant C voltage is more positive. Here, from this instant to this instant, A voltage is more positive. We know A phase is connected to P1. 
That's why T1 is forward biased in this portion. The same way, in this portion, B is more positive. That's why T2 is forward biased. In this portion, C is more positive. That's why T3 is forward biased. Now, the, you know the requirement to turn on the SCR are one is forward bias across its anode and cathode terminal and gate pulse. These two things are required to turn on the SCR. Here, T1 is forward bias in this portion. By applying the gate pulse at this instant, by applying triggering pulse to the gate of the thyristor T1, immediately it will conduct. It will conduct. Means it will allow the current through it. After reaching this point, after reaching this point, the A phase voltage is decreasing and B phase voltage is increasing. So T2 is more positive at this instant. T2 voltage is more positive. That's why T2 will become forward bias from the instant to this instant. Now, by applying gate pulse to the gate of the thyristor T2, T2 will become T2 will become into conduction. After reaching this point, B voltage is decreasing and the C voltage is increasing. So C voltage is connected to T3. That's why T3 is forward bias. By applying gate pulse to the gate of the thyristor T3, T3 starts conducting. T3 starts conducting. Now here we have to apply gate pulse to the thyristor T1 at this instant, means at 30 degrees. And uh, gate pulse T2 to the gate of the thyristor T2 at 150 degree degrees and the T3 that is gate pulse to the gate of the thyristor T3 at 270 degrees. Now see here this is P1. Double this one. Amplitude will give you any value. Period is one cycle. One cycle means 0 0.02 second. Means uh, one cycle means uh, 360 degrees. One cycle means uh, uh, it is 50 hertz frequency. 50 hertz means 50 cycles per second. For one cycle, 0 0.02 second. Pulse width can be 5. Phase delay. Phase delay here we observe 30 degrees. Here 30 degrees. Okay. 360 degrees means 0 0.02 second. Then 30 degrees means 0 0.0016 seconds. Here everything is asking in seconds. Okay. Here seconds. That is 0 0.0016. Apply. Okay. Next, P2. Here amplitude you can give any value and the period is 1 cycle, 0 0.02 second. Pulse width you can give any value. Phase delay. Phase delay, you can see here 150 degrees. 150 degrees means if you convert this 150 degrees into seconds, that is 0 0.0083. 0 0.0083 0 0.0083 Now next uh, T3 Same amplitude is 1 Period is 0 0.02 second Pulse width can be value And phase delay That is phase delay here is 270 degrees so 270 degrees 270 degrees means 0 0.015 second 0 0.015 0 0.015 apply now simulate the circuit okay already given some register value that is 21 and supply voltage is also okay i have to observe i want to observe for two cycles 0 0.04 0 0.02 means one cycle 0 0.04 is two cycles now simulate it
to here. Okay, this is A pair, okay, B pair, and this is C pair. This is 30 degrees. Okay, this is 150 degrees. This is 270 degrees. Okay, up to this output. This is the output. Thick, thick red line is output red. This one, B pair, this is C. Again, it repeats A phase, B phase, and C. Thank you. We will discuss the remaining thing in next part.